That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Dark Waters, the new film by Todd Haynes, which opens November 22nd, courtesy of Focus Features. Now, you weren't very excited for this film, but I was. Because well, I didn't know what it was about. It's at me. all. Okay. Well, I so the opening scene scene had me thinking this was like a like thriller. I think it, the trailer was cut w w would leave you to believe it's a thriller as well. Okay. Um, but I was excited because this is a Todd Haynes film. Uh, and he's known for Safe, Poison, Far from Heaven, uh, Carol, I'm Not There, Velvet Goldmine. I haven't seen any of those. You haven't seen any of those? No. Yes, you have. You've, I made you watch Safe when Criterion put it out with Julianne Moore, who has that environmental illness. Mm. Far From Heaven, where she's married to Dennis Quaid, and he's gay. No, but that sounds interesting. It's excellent. Um, anyway. <sighs> anyway, okay, so you're unfamiliar. Todd Haynes, uh, I'm Not There, where Kate Blanchett was Bob Dylan, while well, all those people were Bob Dylan. I'm remember? familiar with that film, but okay. I didn't see it. Uh, Wonderstruck. Uh, there's anyway. Okay, so well you can look up his filmography if you're interested. <laughs> well, we own most of those. This if film you're is based on This is not a good film to be introduced to him on unfortunately, but Oh, yes, you have seen you said he did the Karen Carpenter movie with the Barbie dolls. Oh, that's like one of his first that, films. That's like it was his college. Well, that was interesting. Yeah, which we own too. But anyway. Okay. I don't think this film's not poorly made. No, no, it, not it's at all. a beautiful well, somber uh, looking film, but um, anyway, what is this film about? It's a legal thrill, a legal drama, I guess you'd call it, uh, about uh, DuPont, uh, the the large American company. Uh, a lawyer discovers that they are hiding uh, the fact that chemicals used in Teflon uh, cause cancer. In short, sure. But it revolves, so that issue, the, the issue of the floral, the chlorofluorocarbons that are like polluting the world is a much bigger issue, but this right. film kind of narrows it down to a small town in West, West Virginia, Virginia yeah. where like some of the runoff from one of their plants has like contaminated yeah. the entire city. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Mark Ruffalo plays, so this is based on a true story, obviously. Yes. Uh, that was, that was inspired that by. That was profiled by a New York. Times article? New York Times New Magazine. New York Magazine. New York Times Magazine. New York Times Magazine. Okay, 2016, whatever. yeah. But, um, uh, the, so it basically, it essentially covers 1998 through 2012. It's a lot of, yeah. um, it's, the time span is quite large. The film is two hours. And it, it does, it, it has, it, it has this misfortune of trying to pack in a lot of so I said immediately after finishing it that it felt like when you go to a Wikipedia page for like an event or a person like let's say Michael Jackson who's like a very big figure mm -hmm. so when you go to like their Wikipedia page the table of contents contents that kind of outlines like all the major points of their life so you kind of get a sense from that table of contents like what has transpired in this person's life or career or the event and that's what this film feels like yeah it's like an outline for like a much more involved um, story. Mm -hmm. So it feels super basic, super rushed, but like, so then you would think, oh, something that's very rushed would be like exhilarating and kind of crazy and chaotic. But somehow this film is like dry as hell. It, it is very dry. There are lots of ponderous scenes where we're looking at some Mark Ruffalo looking through paperwork, not <laughs> stacks of paperwork. The other thing that we didn't talk about before we did the, or, before we sat down to do this, is I just don't even think the issue of this, you know, city uh, where the DuPont factory polluted and harmed all these people, I don't think it's a fascinating story to begin with. Well, yes, because other similar things have been told. There's nothing surprising here about what American corporations or the government does to us. But uh, Ann Brockovich, Michael Clayton, uh, the, the, are uh, a couple films that do this but much better at least well, I, I think because the person they're focusing on is charismatic and compelling and well Mark Ruffalo's yeah Mark Ruffalo of this man Mark yeah. Ruffalo is the focal point he's he's portrayed kind of as a bumbling fool yeah uh, for the most part and actually maybe we should get into that so he it, he we meet him as a lawyer who works for a firm that defends 
uh, these industrial manufacturers. Yes. Uh, so his grandmother, who is from West Virginia, who's kind of like they make it seem like he like they're country bumpkins, but he's like a big city guy because he's like a big time lawyer. He just became partner for a big firm in Cincinnati. So his country bumpkin family in West Virginia refer these farmers to him. So these like played by uh, Tennant was the farmer's name. Played by Bill Camp, who's given is a notable character actor who's given like Joan Crawford eyebrows. I thought he was actually the best part of the film. I thought you thought Victor Garber was. Oh yes, yes. Those anyway, two I think did yeah, a very. Yeah, Bill good Camp job. was good. Yes, but so these uh, farmers come to Cincinnati to find Mark Ruffalo's character to plead for help because they know that there's something poisoning their land. Um, yeah, so I, so that's how it starts, and then he. So you would think like it, it goes against everything he is. Like the fact that he's even willing to take on this case just seems like an insurmountable, an insurmountable uh, sort of feat for these people to achieve. Right. And yet it just happens like, yep, I go over there and I see that these cows are dead and I'm going to take their case. And then he convinces the managing partner at his firm, this firm that is like uber successful defending these manufacturers. And they're just like, yeah, we'll go ahead and you know, let you do this thing that it goes against everything we do. Right. I think the misstep is the f of the film is trying to sell Ruflo and his boss, Tim Robbins, as saviors that are doing this because it's the right thing to do. This um, movie feels like propaganda. Yeah, yeah. Like, this yeah. lawyer... Tim Robbins this... gets a, a histrionic scene where he has to scream about, to hell with them! This is what lawyers are supposed to do! It and... really does feel like the, 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 per like the subject who seems to be involved in the film because he's in it, like he has a cameo. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a stipulation was like, you're gonna portray us in this light, which is very much like they're saviors, they're heroes, but they're not. Like, and, and, there, and there's no explanation of why these people chose to do this. There's even a scene where Mark Ruffalo's character tells his boss, Tim Robbins, like, let's keep going, the payoff will be great. And then he goes into this like diatribe about like, how they're not they're not in it for the money yeah and it's is, just like girl bye gonna, <laughs> then why why are you in this high-rise big sure. ass office downtown like it just there there was nothing to help me understand like why these this firm would have allowed this case to go on and, and it's what allows the film to feel a, a little hokey and and wish it made me wish that they would focus on some other things like maybe some of the individual families because they it, it opens quite strongly i think like uh it, focusing on bill camp and the things he's cutting off his cows um but then that kind of goes away and then they try that cycle again in the second half with mayor winningham the, the to, to kind of introduce these personal human interest components to the story but it doesn't it's work. too little too late yeah. because we've already spent an hour and some change like watching mark ruffalo's character rummage through there's i would say if you put it all together there's probably like 12 to 15 minutes of him just rummaging through papers instead of like they focusing on the because their last name's pilot bilat yeah, sure. Uh, focusing on his family. Anne Hathaway, I think, is Miss Cast as his wife. Uh, nothing innately wrong with her performance. I just don't buy that this is a woman who gave up her career as an attorney to raise their three boys through the decades-long case that uh, unwinds in this. And uh, the, the conversations they have, the things they do, they, they try to show that he's had to take a hit by taking this case, like he's, he's taken pay cuts, so they're seen like eating at Arby's. Uh, but their conversations in the home are, are all these tics and characterizations having to do with Christianity. Uh, and we were talking, there's a, past, there's a sequence where the kids are asking what a hooker is, and that's what Mary Magdalene is, and Anne Hathaway explains that, yeah, but Jesus converted her. And I, I think the film is, what were we saying? The, I think you're reading into it. I didn't necessarily agree with you on this. I okay. think you're reading into it more than than what it should. I so I think what you're trying to say is that the in it's it's sort of symbolic of the inability of like us as a society to recognize that something is bad for us. So the people in Dupont, like the the people who live in the town, refuse to believe that this huge manufacturer right. would do anything to harm them. And then you think like, well. And Hathaway's character can't even explain to her children what a sex worker is. So, which, which I think is where... 
in comparison to what they have now become aware is like the world's being poisoned by these chemicals and yet you don't have the ability to just tell your kids the truth about this you know religious but figure. not only that the, i think the problem is that these people that are the savior figures believe that they are also believing what they've been told what's been passed down right and i one that there was you know which that made sense to me for I, sure so to wrap this up, I just don't think that the story itself is that compelling. It's nothing new, like you said. We all know that, you know, uh, consumerism and uh, big business is just destroying the world. And I don't think any of us are surprised that, like, these companies do things to hide. And cover up. And, and cover and up. have all the money and all the time. And all, and all the, the time and all the money. I don't think that's a surprise. So it wasn't that original. No, and, and in fact, the end scene, you know, there's a bunch of subtitle things that happen to explain what what else has gone on but the the end scene where they're talking outside of Benihana's if you remember left me with this feeling of like it, it was like the end of a Anne Rand novel if Anne Rand was trying to also be slightly Capra-esque if that makes sense like it, it just it's very somber and dreary and the message that we're left with it is kind of like if you try to battle these corporations you're just gonna give your life up to it Sure. Him, but uh, what do we like? So you liked Victor Garber, and I agree he was quite good as uh, a Dupont official. That right. Gets nasty. Uh, Bill Camp uh, is also pretty good. I like. I think it's a well-made film. Yeah, yeah. Like, You know. You know, uh, Haynes, cinematographer Ed Lockman, it looks great. There's lots of this brooding interior shots and um, characters obfuscated or their reflections obfuscated by things as he kind of likes to do. It's it's dark and dreary, but I like that. Well, dark and dreary, like a like like a shitty rainy day. Yes. Where you still have to go <laughs> yeah. to work. Like it's not dark and dreary, like suspenseful and no, macabre. No, no. And um, and the opening opening scene is these uh, like three teenagers go skinny dipping in like an area that's been like you know no trespassing allowed. In 1975. That's. Yes, know. and. Uh, because I didn't know anything about this film, I was certain there was something in the water that was going to attack them. Well, but then, like, these, like, uh, security guards on a boat tell them, like, hey, get out of here, and then they're spraying the water with some chemical. So uh, it, it just it started off on, like, a, a, a very intriguing note, and then it just turned into this very basic story of, like... Well, also the title, which there's an old Merle Oberon film noir from the 40s, and then there's... Uh, Hideo Nakata's J-Horror Dark Water, which was remade in English. Like, Does it also have anything to do with this movie? No, but the oh. title, as I'm saying, is kind of a problem, uh, I think. It sells it incorrectly. Like, dark Waters, I don't know. Well, it, and then also, before we saw the film and I knew that we were going to, I kept typing in Dark Tide. <laughs> Which is that Halle Berry shark movie? Yeah. Which is better than this film? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to watch a film that has dark in the title, maybe check out Dark. It. You. You're shaking your head now. No, that's it's not, better than that this is film. not a good movie. It's better than this one. No. Uh, this is. At least it's more thrilling. It may be more thrilling. If this you're afraid of the ocean and sharks, you will get more. Um, the Todd, Life from that movie. The Todd <laughs> Haynes film is more artfully made. There's yes, there's an sure. aim that I I don't know why he made this movie, but um, anyway, uh, what do you give this? <laughs> That's going to be the tagline for this. Why did you make this film? <laughs> I would give it one and a half out of five stars. I'd give it I two and a half out of five. Okay, two and a half. Yeah. Oh, okay. There, it's not garbage. It's just no. <sighs> That's this. <laughs> Can you? Take line that. Toodaloo. Bye.